Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's listen to these testimonies. Where's the, where's the young girl with the family? Where are they? Come. There's a girl that couldn't walk since 2019. Come with her. Come. Glory to God. Yes, testify. How are you? Is this working? Let me see. It's working. Look this way. Grateful to God for what he What is your name first? Look into this turn this way. I know you're shy. Yeah, tell me. My name is Oluwalunimi Irinle and I'm twelve years old and So since nine. Yeah. Yeah. I wanna ask your sister because <laughs> tell me when your sister came back home and you saw her walking, what went through your mind? I I don't know. Um, glory to God, I, uh, I don't know, um, what went to my, to my mind was, um, she was healed, I guess. Wow. Praise God. This is a miracle. Only God knows what this family has been through to see this miracle. Jesus loves you. And everything... Is perfecting for you in Jesus name what do you have to say yeah I'm just um, thankful to God um, I, I believe it's a healing journey yeah. right um, and our prayer is that uh, healing is really going to be perfected Amen. and that she's going to walk perfectly in Jesus name um, let me explain that to you yes one God doesn't do abandoned things it doesn't go halfway that's not the God we serve. So someone says, why does it not happen all at the same time? Sometimes the body process. Yeah, so when you read the Bible, the Bible says that one person was healed and Jesus Christ asked, and the master acted, when did he begin to amend? Amend means when did he begin to recover? Sometimes just the nature of how the bones had been for years. For them, you know, so the things are flowing back and all of those kind of things. So, yes. what I need you to do is two things. And I'm saying so because I see this all the time. Number one is to keep reminding yourselves that she needs to keep exercising that faith and stay in the place of thanksgiving yeah, through the season. Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah. So, pa Pastor, one of the reasons, you know, we came today is, you know, remember when Jesus said, we're, we're not ten healed, right? So the reason we came is, you know, to give thanksgiving to God. I, I wasn't in the country when, you know, they came for the importation service. And you, you are the dad? Yes, I'm the dad. Oh, who brought, who brought Oh, so it was my mom. Oh, your so mom. So unfortunately, I wasn't in the country at the time. My wife had traveled as well, too. So I, I told my mom to come stay, you know, to, to just help. And so my, my mom, okay, so my sister, the connection to the church is that my sister that is currently in Canada now, she's a member of this church. Oh, wow. And, you know, my mom is a woman of prayer. Hold on, why am I getting a side view of him? Why am I not getting a very good view of him? The camera, you should fix that. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank so, you. So, you know, of course, you know. Or maybe they want to look into the camera because, yeah. Okay, yes. Uh, and, you know, so, you know, ladies and their mom, so she encouraged my mom to come over and that's, you know, to bring Nimi. We've been praying about Nimi's case you know, for some years now. But like I said, yeah, it's, it's a journey. Like Pastor said as well, too, it's a journey. And we know it's going to be perfected. Amen. Um, what keeps coming to my mind is that, so we got the, we got the diagnosis that Nimi had mild cerebral palsy in 2019. That was three years ago. Oh. And, you know, when Thank this Thank you for reminding me of my time. You just told me about my time that I have one more minute for this testimony. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. There's a lot to unpack. There's a lot to unpack, yeah. But, the thing about miracles, you know, as God has ministered to me, is that God practically needs to suspend the natural order of things. Thank you, Jesus. 
And so I know that this is going to happen. It's going to be a miracle where, because when you're diagnosed with cerebral palsy, it's a lot of things. It's, more it's than a lot. Working. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of things. It affects you know the brain. I understand. But that. Nini's performance, I mean, she easily stops eighty. You know, in school, so we don't have any problem in that area. But it's just you know our walking, and we know that God is going to set us because Amen. when it, when it happens. Is a, is, a, is a damage to a part of the brain. No, I understand because yes. I, I pray for the sick. So I've seen a lot of this. Yes. So this is not the first time. And yes. because I've done it for a long time, most of the time the parents always want to explain to me, like mm. you're joined to do right now. They always want to explain to me. And I'm like, I know. And they're like, you still don't know. And, you know, you know. And I say, okay. So we just, you know, to cut the long story short, uh, Jesus said, we're 10 not healed. We know that Nimi's healing has started. Amen. And it's going to be perfected in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. You know, thank Praise you very God. much to the house. Praise we appreciate God. the opportunity Praise to fellowship God. with you today. David, can I give you a hug? Oh, wonderful. All right. Bless you. Go back with daddy now. Go back with daddy now. Yeah. Good work. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. Just imagine this is 2019. When what I heard that she has not worked. Yeah. And sometimes, like he said, sometimes just three years of not using something. Have you packed your car for three years and not started before? What happens when you start it? It becomes a big challenge. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, we... we Aken, are you going to share your testimony right now? Give him a, give him a microphone. Um, good morning, church. Good morning. So last year, I think I started attending Harvesters January last year, close to Wine Press. So at the end of Wine Press, it was time for the Isaac offering. And you know in, in December, you spend a lot of money. So in January, your account is looking like this. But God put an amount in my heart. And usually when God tells me something, I'll just do it. So I gave that amount of money and I forgot about it. So about June, I got a contract that was 10 times the sum of money that I gave. Wow. Then in May, when I was about to travel for my brother's wedding, one of my best friends gave me an envelope full of dollars. Wow. Then... This testimony is almost complete, but I'll give it now so that it will not return empty. One of my prayer points last year was I wanted access to people of influence and information, and when I get it, the resources to execute. So I was in Abuja having a discussion with my friend, and I was like, we need to do contracts. A few weeks later, he calls me. This is on the table. The money was not there. Okay. I called another of my friends. See what is on the table. We need this amount of money. Without hesitation, he brought the money. We executed. So now, one of the items I brought here is the report for that contract. We are praying on it. Praise God. And by the grace of God. And then, in this service, you mentioned in the first service that see yourself in an apartment in Manhattan. One of the pictures I printed was a penthouse overlooking Central Park in Manhattan, and I brought it. So, Pastor, today... I will receive all the things I brought today. Thank you. Wow, somebody shout hallelujah. Is that today? I will receive all. Praise God. Wow, wine press has been powerful. Testimonies online. All of you that have testimonies, you must find a way to send us your testimonies. You know, I love what Nimi's dad said. He said, we have come back to come and testify. We've come back to come and testify to the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Will you please turn your... So, yeah. So, we would... Okay, let me say this right now. So, every wine press, we have an instruction to take an offering that will stretch us. Every one of us does that, including myself. So, even the pastor is not exempted. So, we have that offering. We call it Isaac offering. Isaac offering is literally from the Bible where... Abraham offered Isaac. Isaac was the most precious person in his life. He offered Isaac. So it's not just your fight or your offering. It's an offering that you get to that pinches you. It's a stretch. So what that means is that if you've never given maybe 10,000 before, you want to stretch and give 10,000. And if you've never done a 100,000 given before, you want to stretch and say, I'm giving for the first time my first 100,000. 
the question is that why do we give our giving is a testimony of faith like he was doing we're testifying in advance of the power and the grace of god we're testifying in advance you know so i understand some of like oh i hope i did not try to make me lose my money no if you have nobody's other compulsion i need that my tiny to if this happens no 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 i'm tying it to your faith so some of you to be the first time you give a hundred thousand and the lord will stretch you and some of you to be the first time you give a five hundred thousand and it will stretch you and some of you to be the time you give the first one million two point five one ten million and it will stretch you giving is a function of faith not what you have giving is a function of faith you don't give because you have a lot of money a lot of people that have a rich don't give but your faith in that i obey god and i believe so this child i'm believing god for this country i'm believing god these things look at his own testimony and it just happened we've already done this but some of you are just coming for the first time the ushers have these slips which is the icy covering slips please take it and fit it out you don't have to write your name you know that you can write it if you want to that nobody's following up on anything it's just between you and god but all of you that have the sleeps i saw some of you write um i want this i want that uh i want a i want a i want you to get i want to pay my rent and those are great things but i want to ask you can you ask god for some big deal things big deal things like lord i want to buy my parents a house in ikoi yeah ask him for that kind of thing lord i will at least let one of your requests be something that it's a goal that once you hit it you know god has done something it may not be all of your requests lord i don't mind to have a private jet that's my request at least one of the three things so you can wave your hands and the ushers will give you a sleep if you want the isaac the, um, the isaac offering card yeah just wave your hands some of you have already gotten it and the reason why is that when we begin to pray we're going to bring it together we've prayed on some already and we're going to pray over it so raise your hands and the ushers will give you that at the moment glory to god i say glory to god it's amazing it's amazing you know i can and um um, and thank you for sharing that powerful story of what the Lord is doing. Glory. So, if you want to use your eyes up, just raise up your hands. Ushers, where are you? Yeah, yeah. Help give them all those cards. You know, help give them all those cards. And we, as we just stretch our faith. All right. Glory to God. Let's start in our teaching today. Um, in the first and second service, I really, in the first place, especially, I did a lot of teaching about clarity. In the second service, I spoke about it a little and we jumped. Did I even mention to you that um, today we were men? Oh wow! Can you play the video? My press was powerful. You know, the testimony are just like boggling. Which one? I'm loading for time. Play the video. When we're ministering here, I hope you know they were sharing wine press in all the other churches. And Tony in that place, the power of God hits the children in the children's church. In the children's church, let me show you what happened. They capture the video. Play the video. This is a children's church. As a ministry, the, the children fell under the power. They began to cry. They began to cry and pray and shake. Someone had to run out and go and get one of the pastors. Like, we don't know, look at the children. They had to go and get the pastors to come and administer. And they were not even here. They were watching in the extension. Give you some volume. They had to hold the children. They had to, because they didn't know what, you know. Look at that. My God. You can't fake this. You can fake this. This is the raw power of the Holy Spirit. Just imagine they were watching TV and the power of God was touching them this way. Praise God. Will you please turn your Bibles to John chapter 5? John chapter 5. This is wonderful. Somebody say hallelujah. John chapter 5. Verse 2. 
So we have that, so many miracles. Deaf ear hearing, a lot of people online got healed from different countries, sent in their testimony. Hallelujah. All right, John chapter 5 in verse 2. The Bible says this, And there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market of Paul. And I'm talking about how to receive a breakthrough. And when I say a breakthrough, a breakthrough is different. You know, it's not, you know, a breakthrough can be anything. It's just about moving to the next level. Moving to the next level. Some of you are here and um, it's a spiritual breakthrough you want. You just want to be in a place where you can experience God on another dimension. That's all you want. Some of you are here. It's more than a spiritual breakthrough. There's a breakthrough you want in your finances. There's a breakthrough you want in your business. There's something big that you want God to do for you. So how to receive a breakthrough? The question I want to ask is this. One of the challenges I've seen is, and the reason I'm teaching this is this. We've been spending the, 20, the last few days to fast and pray. Why are many Christians talk despite the prayers, despite the fasting, despite all of those things? They're still struggling. Is this something from God's word that we can teach? They can open their eyes to see what the Spirit of God can do and the possibilities of the Spirit. Glory to God. Yeah, so John chapter 5, verse 2. It's a long reading. The Bible said, There is a Jerusalem by the sheep market pool, a pool, um, a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. Having five porches in this lay a great multitude of impotent, of the blind, of the blind, hurt, waited, waiting for the move of the water. It was a community of sick people. The Bible says, For an angel went at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever first after the trouble of the water stepped in was made all of whatever disease that he had. The Bible says in verse 5, And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity for thirty and eight years. He had been sick and been there for thirty and eight years. The Bible says, And when Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been there now a long time, he said to him, Will thou be made whole? Question, what is the answer to this question? Will thou be made whole? What? It's either going to be in the affirmative, it's going to be yes or what? No. What did the man answer? The Bible says this. The Bible says, and the important man answered and said to him, I have no man. And the question you want to ask is this. This is a major problem. When you stay in the problem for a long time, it begins to affect your belief system. The one that sends the angel to the river to heal the sick came himself looks at you in the face and says will thou be made whole and you say i have no man one of the major challenges one of the major challenges is this one of the major challenges is the fact that for god to touch you he must touch your belief system for god to touch you he must touch your belief system i was teaching the leaders and i said this to them i said every breakthrough is a change in belief and is a change in mental is a change in insight there is an insight you have that leads to a change in belief so if you're looking for a marital breakthrough you're going to have a change in belief if you're looking for a financial breakthrough there's going to be a change in belief if you're looking for a spiritual breakthrough there's going to be a change in belief and the change in belief is based on a change in insight the question is this which thought pattern or belief system do you have that's holding you captive beliefs are very powerful what are beliefs beliefs are conviction beliefs are conviction beliefs are conviction beliefs are confidence in something why are beliefs very powerful number one john chapter 11 verse 40 belief belief creates what you see john chapter 11 verse 40 john chapter 11 verse 40 this is what the bible says is it says if thou wouldest believe you will see the glory of god the question is this why can't you see the glory of god because you don't believe it there are people that are here there are people that are here they are praying and saying that lord i want to break an addiction but you don't see yourself an addiction you don't see yourself addiction free there are people that are here that you know they are praying lord i want to move my business by 10x but do you believe because what you believe determines what you see you're praying for a marriage but when a great guy comes you say that you think it's not real because you don't believe it do you believe the Lord can heal you? Do you believe the Lord can expand you? Do you believe the Lord can change your level? Do you believe that things can turn around in a huge and significant way? See, 
what the Bible says here. He said, and Jesus said unto her, Say I not to you that if thou would believe, you will see the glory of God. You will see. What you believe determines what you see. What are you believing? What you believe determines what you see. Your belief determines your worldview. You keep telling yourself, they are not responsible men. You will not see one. You keep telling yourself that this country, nobody makes money. You will not make money. Because that is what you believe. You keep telling yourself, I cannot do what in Nigeria. Then you will not do what in Nigeria. You keep telling yourself that nobody wants to help me. Then nobody wants to help you. You're very correct. Whatever you believe becomes your reality. Jesus Christ said, if you will believe all things he says if you will believe he said you will see what you see is what you believe and this man was waiting for an impartation yet he didn't believe it could happen to him it was just practicing religion and that was it why is belief powerful because what you believe is what you become john chapter 1 verse 12 what you believe is what you become let me tell you something you have to travel internal first before you travel external what you believe is what you become john chapter 1 verse 12 see what the bible says it says as many as believed on him to them he gave the power to become it's your believing that turns you to become the question is this what exactly do you believe do you what exactly do you believe about 2023 do you have some very clear beliefs about 2023 what do you believe he says as many as believed on him he gave the power to become what cannot enter your mind cannot enter your life what cannot enter your mind cannot enter your life I had a very powerful testimony very touching because a lot of people died and this was the only survival it was an Ethiopian air crash it happened many years ago and I think it was carrying loads of Nigerians and when the pilot announced and said sorry we're gonna have a crash and he told everybody do whatever you can do to keep yourself alive the there was a guy in the plane and um, he took the mantle that was anointed he put it on his head then the guy next to him said did you hear the pilot we're going to have a crash do whatever you want to do to die prepare do whatever you want to do you know we're going to crash and die he says what are you going to do and the guy looked at him he said yeah the one preparing to die i'm preparing to leave eventually this is a big testimony is a documented story the plane landed and crashed into two or three he was the only one that came out alive he said he found himself on the floor on a seat he said i told them you're preparing to die he said me i'm not preparing to die i'm preparing to leave some people are preparing for a recession they will see it we are preparing for surplus we will see it the reason why is that what you believe you will become what you believe you will become what you believe you will become the first thing about believing is this your believing determines your response and your performance your believing determines what your response and what your performance so if you believe there's nobody to marry you will behave in a way that you'll never find someone to marry if you believe that there's no money anywhere your belief your behavior will be the same way for example i want to ask you something before have you ever seen someone that has a dog and the dog does not bite and yet you now show your friend that doesn't like dogs and your friends are running and you know and, and you just say no no have you seen my dog bingo he doesn't bite he's a, he's a pet dog and you say hey bingo i say no 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 and as he's running you know the dog starts chasing and the person wonders what went wrong just now the reason why is that your belief was transferred to the dog you believe that there, you, you believe that there's nobody in this country you know what will happen as money is coming to you you'll be running away from it because you, you'll be running to where there's no money because that's what you believe you believe that there's no great woman to marry what will happen to you as great women are coming you will not go towards great women you go towards what are not great you 
believe that business will not do well in this country. That's what it is. See, if God wants to change a man, he changed the belief system. I'm saying so because in this meeting, when the impartation of God comes upon you, there'll be new insights. There'll be new beliefs. And one of the things you're going to do in this meeting is this. You're going to do two videos. You're going to do a video of yourself telling yourself what you have received. So that by the time you get to next month, next quarter, when life becomes tough, you can remind yourself that this is who I am. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Your belief determines your response. You cannot think small and act big. You know why? Because your belief determines your response. So if God wants to help you, what God helps you is that God begins to work in your belief system. He begins to work in your belief system. You can't think small and act big. You can't think negative and be positive. You can't think negative and have a positive life. People that are always depressed always have negative thoughts. People that are always suicidal always have negative thoughts. People that are very progressive always have positive thoughts. The question is this, which thoughts do you dwell in in your life? Do you dwell in on negative thoughts or are you dwell in on positive thoughts? Jesus Christ asks the man in John chapter 5. He says, do you want to walk? The man says, I have no man. That is not the question. The question is, do you want to walk? The answer to the question is yes. If Jesus comes to you and says, do you want fun for your business? Don't tell him that. I don't know anybody. Shut up. Say yes. If Jesus comes to you and say, do you want to get married? Say, I don't know good men. Say yes. Say yes. Sometimes your belief are so challenged. You cannot say it. And remember, your belief determines your response. When God really wants to bless you, one of the things he does is to send you a message that will change your belief. When Satan wants to attack you, guess what he attacks? You know, when you talk about demonic attack, a lot of you allow all this own video to affect your mind. Because you think of people like, ooh, ooh. You know, those are not, see, those are Hollywood representation of ignorance of what they think spiritual attack is. The major spiritual attack takes place in your mind first. You know what they are called? They are called limiting thoughts. He will just say that your marriage can never be happy. And you accept it. And the moment you believe it, guess what happens to you? You begin to act in a way that makes your marriage unhappy. It says, nobody can marry you. You will accept it. And because your belief determines what your performance. Luke chapter 1 verse 37. It says, blessed is he that believeth, for there shall be performance unto the things he believes. He tells you that nobody will find your peace. There are a lot of bad beliefs. And the reason I'm asking you is this. Do you know the area of your life where the devil has put a limiting thought in your mind? Have you looked at it before? I forgot to mention to you. This Sunday, we're not meant to have this service here. We would spent over a hundred million holding the service here in the last three days. We entered all the halls. We had almost 20,000 people every night for the past three days. And really spent a lot. We said Sunday service, let's cut our costs, go back to church. It's four services. And that was good. And yesterday, I got a call from our church administrator of the Lekki Church. And he said to me that, showed me, you can show the video. And he showed me the video and he said, we put, and because we need to be large, we put an extra tent in the car park. I rented on that car park. And, we, you know, and what had happened was that because of the rain on Friday, the rain uprooted the tent, landed it on the other tent, and one tent began to destroy the other tent. And when I got there, I had the opportunity to be like, we are finished. What is going to happen? I looked at it. I said, Satan, why are you so hungry? What have we done? Just 20,000 people. That's when you hear them making noise on Twitter. They say, Pastor Bolaji has taken all the bad people. You know, they, they, you, know, they, you, know, they, you know, this and this and this. I said, we're just coming. We're just, we're just started. The kingdom of this world belongs to our God. Oh, wow. Somebody shout hallelujah. We're just coming. The biggest concert can be some people singing with naked bodies. 
it can be some people give it no 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 the biggest concert is for the biggest name and the biggest name is the name of jesus somebody shout amen praise god and one day when that happened i said lord maybe you're trying to tell me something also just like just for you in case you don't know this year we have nop conference in the uk and guess what we're at the wembley well, we're at the wembley arena Ten thousand people wembley arena Ten thousand people it's not a concert it's a prayer conference and the whole place will be packed with the power of the holy ghost yeah glory to god so yesterday by 12 noon we had to make a decision and they said we called this place they said oh we've turned down everything that's why they stayed different they turned down everything we said the time they said but it cost this amount of money i'm like oh my goodness we just spent a lot of money we're trying to buy this facility we need to pay this as i was saying some of the married men in church just say pastor how much is it give it to us And before I knew it, all the bills were paid. Hold on. But that's not it. I didn't think about it as negative. I didn't say, Satan, I'm finished. Oh, I'm finished. You lose your job, I'm finished. Ah! Stop talking that way. You are more than a conqueror. Uh, just because you had divorce now, your life is over. Ha! Ah! You are more than a conqueror. Just because of all the support, you are more than a conqueror. The Bible said, Great I is he that is in me, that he that is in the world. Somebody stand on your feet and shout, Hallelujah! <laughs> say, I am the victor. Say, I am the winner. So, I'll say, Why are they shouting? Because the shouting side is a winning side. Somebody give the Lord a big shout. <laughs> Praise God. You can have your seat. And guess what? We're here today. Think about this. This is the third service. How will have all these people fitted in into the Bagada church? Into the Lekki church? It's like been chaos upon chaos upon chaos upon chaos. You think you have big dreams. God is saying you're dreaming too small. But you need to believe. You need to believe so how does so listen to this what satan does is this he puts this limiting thought in the heart of people exodus chapter 1 verse 8 I, I hope you can see this quickly exodus chapter 1 verse 8 how does satan attack people he puts this thought in their mind i'm going to give you some examples of the thoughts verse 8 the bible says there arose a king over egypt that knew not joseph continue verse 9 and the bible says this and he said to the people his people the people of the children of israel read with me they are what good listen the king was very strategic he said the israelites are more and they're mightier than we question how did the people that were more and mightier become slaves this is what i call the strategy of pharaoh and babylon is it satanic strategy think about it the king attacked them not because they were weaker because he was afraid they would take over them look at the next line he says this he says this verse 10 come on let's deal with them wisely let's they multiply and they come to pass that when they fall out any war they join with their enemies and fight against us and so they get them out of the land did you hear that so the attack against egypt was fear against israel was fear but the question is this how did did how did pharaoh i want to watch now because if you can understand this you understand the big principle how did pharaoh move them from people that were mightier and more to people that were scared and small the next line one thing he did bible says gradually he began to make their life bitter he began to make their life bitter you know why as he made their life bitter on the outside their image on the inside changed and they turned from victors to victim on the inside and as they became victim on the inside then they began to oppress them what does satan do this is what satan does satan is the master of using situations to tell you 
how bad you are how weak you are he's the one that will break your marriage you will not say you're an irresponsible man he's the one that will make you lose the money you will not say you're a bad person he uses those things to convince you it will do the damage he will use damage to accuse you gradually just imagine israel was israel was stronger they became victims you know why this is what satan does he will use the thing he said you see you see you see you're not married how can you be intelligent how can you be fine you're not married at 37 and i said that's true how can i be intelligent he will use he will cause the problem then use the problem to oppress you he will make you sin and now accuse you with this thing before god and that's how many of you are what, what are some of the limiting thoughts that satan tells you let me give you some satan will tell you i have nobody to help so he begin to say things like i have nobody to help me so that's going to tell you he's going to tell you everybody wants to cheat me what kind of demonic thought is that people don't want to cheat me they want to help me good men are sent ahead of me don't you read the bible that when the steps of a man a servant are ordered of the lord the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the lord everybody wants the reason why is that favor compassion like a shield I, i'm favored he puts the stuff to your mind he says i'm a nobody how can you be a nobody did you read the bible bible says christ in you he's a hope of glory and all those thoughts begin to limit you and you begin to think small and small and small satan tells you good men are hard to find <laughs> and you be like didn't you read in the bible did you read did you read isaiah chapter 62 verse 5 did you read in your bible is it good men are hard to find Let's see what the bible says access to verse 5 look at what the bible says do you have it oh yeah he said as a young man married a virgin so shall thy sons marry thee are you d are you d he says this and the bridegroom as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride he says so shall the lord rejoice over you he said that this is what cut, cut they cut it did you, did you just say amen what does that mean man to kabaya things will happen in your life angels will be jumping in heaven like this angels he says as the bridegroom rejoices over his wife over his bride he said the lord will rejoice over you this year you will have testimony that will make heaven proud this year things will happen to your children that will make heaven proud things will happen in your business that will make heaven proud you'll be rolling from testimony to testimony from grace to grace from victory to victory shout amen somebody shout amen somebody on this side shout amen somebody praise god please you can have your set as i close this morning i want to ask you some questions someone says how do i know if i have a thought that's not just to hold me back i'll give you some like it's just areas you can ask what area of your life do you feel powerless and un unhappy about you know why if there's an area of your life where you feel powerless unhappy about most likely there's a belief there that is making you unhappy think about it what area of your life are you behind and you've tried to go forward and you can't go forward what does god do when he wants to give breakthrough oh my god what god does is very powerful when god wants to give you what god wants to give you a breakthrough the first thing he does that he begins to destroy the limiting thoughts how does he destroy it he called abraham he said abraham come what, what, what was his name before abraham abraham means assume supposed father because he didn't have a child he said let's destroy that name first no more abraham abraham meaning the father of many nations he used he therefore destroyed that limiting thought that's why in this conference there's an insight that god is giving you that's meant to destroy the current limiting thought it's your word from the conference it's meant to destroy your current limiting thoughts hold on to it that's what the bible says he sent his word and it's what is light but the next thing god does is this this is wonderful somebody say hallelujah john chapter 4 verse 48 glory to god 
John chapter 4, verse 14. Someone lift up your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray, 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 pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Menengo, Silenga, Mendo Katia, the Keton is Zeus in Prone in the Ketor and Aziza Legori Masasa, Legreton is Kevra in the Mendros Kevra in the Merota Haswata, Bako de Susus Ke Pelegone, Bengoli Nibrando Casco Practic in the Koraba Sambala, Baroke Menesile Breket of Rombre Manamrandi Hala. Amen. Do you have it? See what, see what the Bible says. I want to show you how to receive today. The Bible said, and Jesus said to them, except you will see signs and wonders, you will not believe. What is this guy saying? Jesus is saying this. I want to do something in your life, but you don't have the capacity to believe for it. So, you're working on this business range of 5 to 10 million, but I want to take to a range of 100 million. Even though you're praying, you don't have what? The capacity to believe for it. God says, so how do I help you? So what God does is this. He gives you a supernatural intervention. Why does he do that? It does something in your life that expands your mind. Watch this. So when he called Moses, he said, go and see Pharaoh. Moses said, me? Impossible. I can do it. He says, Moses, what do you have? So he needed to expand Moses' belief system. You know what he did? He turned Moses' rod into a serpent. He did, what was he doing? He turned, he did one. Moses could not comprehend. He did another one. He could not comprehend. He did another one. Okay. Yeah. The reason why God does impartation is to expand your belief system. You know what? When you see Nimi healed, that should expand your belief system. When you see I can tell you my income went times 10x, that should expand your belief system. When we start praying and you feel the power of the Holy Ghost, question, nobody touched you. Why do you feel that way? That should you should be like, my God. God is with me this year. God is with me this year. That's you expand. You know, Pastor Femi George was telling me just before the service started. He said, I'm so confident about this year. I said, that's it. I said, that's where God wants you to be. He wants you to start the year with a conviction that it is settled in your favor. Praise God. How does God break limits? He uses new insight from his word. But the other thing that he takes you to an experience and breaks it. And that's why when disciples ask, when just guys say that they were the living of the Pharisee, they might say, uh-uh, it's worried because you don't have bread. Just guys say that, are you guys okay? How can I be worried that they don't have bread? Didn't you see what happened before? Meaning that based on what happened before, do you think bread is my problem? You know what God is saying to you? God is saying to you. Because the reason people struggle to believe is logic. It's just human nature. It's just difficult to believe some things can happen. Like, let me testimony now. Some of you even think that it's arranged. I understand. I used to think that way. He said, oh, it's only going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to pay the father. That they must have paid the father some good money to do this. I understand. The reason why is that it's just out of range for your mental power. It's out of range. But when God wants to help you, it's you that will fall under the power. Nobody will touch you. You will fall. Go! You know say, what happened? In the second service, one lady was saying that. He said, I've been here about falling, falling, falling. He said, and the lady I know her, brought her from the very educated home. They stay in Koi. The brother also, you know, brothers of 40-something in oil and gas. He said, when the power of God came on us, on, when was it? Thursday or Friday? It was maybe Friday. He said, my sister fell out. Pa! He said, I fell out. Pa! My brother fell out. He said, I was feeling a wild wind. He said, I didn't talk about it because I thought I was imagining things. This is what it's about. It's, it's, it's in our 40s. He said, I didn't know. But, he said, but my brother posted in the, in the group chat that did anybody notice the wild wind? He said, then I said, wow, I wasn't imagining things. This happened for real. You know the thing? Some of you, you're so smart. You're so used to lie, tires, and logic. It's difficult for you to believe in the miracle. But that's why God wants to hit you like a thunderbolt. So that it can expand your capacity. Stand up and let us pray. Oh, glory to God.